So about that probable cause affidavit, it is still sealed. A PCA is supposed to lay out why law enforcement believes a suspect is guilty of a crime. This affidavit, we expect, will have exact details about why investigators were led to the 28-year-old criminology student from nearby Pullman, Washington. Possibly Koberger's connection to the victims, how he pulled off the crime, why they think it was him, all those things should be included. And one of the biggest details may be how, after saying for so long they did not have a suspect in mind, how they made that link. Likely more than the car he drives, that white Hyundai Elantra. National news outlets claim they know about that connection, and they have for several days. So many family members that we've spoken to so far say they are relieved that someone is behind bars. Uh, sources, law enforcement sources, have been telling us that a big crack in this case came from DNA, specifically uh, genetic genealogy. And, and so we'll be hearing a little bit more about that, likely in that probable cause statement. That was NBC's Gotti Schwartz from Monday. And that genetic genealogy, he said, was the big crack in the case, was something one of our viewers asked us about yesterday. Brian, could you delve into the DNA gene genealogy database used for the suspect at the U of I? Does the government now have genealogy info that previously was controlled by individuals and private organizations? And how accurate is this database? Well, to answer those three questions, it would require the knowledge of a DNA expert. And it just so happens we have one of those in our own backyard. With Dr. Greg Hampikian, terms like renowned and preeminent cannot be overstated. He got a degree in biology in 1982. He got a master's in genetics in 1986. He got a doctorate in genetics in 1990. He's been a board member of the Georgia Innocence Project since 2003. He started the Idaho Innocence Project in 2006, a year after he started teaching biological sciences at Boise State University. He's also the director of the Forensic Justice Project at BSU. He's a musician, a songwriter, a playwright. But back to that DNA expert stuff. Dr. Hampikian says he's used his, or he has used that expertise to help prove the innocence of wrongly convicted people around the country and around the world. Think Christopher Tapp in Eastern Idaho and Amanda Knox in Italy. Normally in our backyard, today he's in Europe. But he took some time to speak with Andrew Bartline about the DNA forensic process and how it could have been used to solve this quadruple murder. The crime labs um, are kind of behind the times. The genealogists have been doing this for more than a decade. The crime labs are just starting to do it. Genetic genealogy, what is that exactly? And so in this case, what it seems happened is they got some DNA. We don't know what from, maybe from an access point like a doorknob or a window. Once the DNA is sequenced, you can then take that file just like a consumer would to one of the genealogy sites that allows police to search public records of people who have opted in saying, hey, if there's a murderer or a rapist in my family, I don't mind if you use my DNA to try to find them. I don't think it says exactly that, but there's, a, there's an opt-in box. And um, enough people have done that, that if there is a, a Caucasian DNA sample, you have better than 70% chance of finding the family tree last name, et cetera, of, of the person who left the DNA. So if they don't get a hit in any of the, I guess, criminal databases of previously convicted criminals, they would then go to a commercial outlet where people would voluntarily submit their DNA to find out their own genealogy that way? There is a company, Verigen. Uh, for example, I've worked with, uh, with them, uh, and they have a program for the police cost about $500 a file that the police want to say, hey, we have this file. There's no hit to the convicted offender database. We use the, the genealogy type of DNA. Here's the file. Can you send us relatives to this piece of evidence? Just like it was somebody looking for their long lost cousin. So after you get the genetic genealogy match, you get a a buckle swab, a mouth swab from the person who uh, is a suspect and see if they match using traditional DNA methods. I, I imagine that it, in this case that they've probably already gotten that far through maybe a discarded cup or a cigarette butt or something like that. So they probably, for their probable cause, uh, have already verified the match. But we'll see once it's unsealed. I think a lot of people have this perception that DNA evidence is just a slam dunk land that we got the guy. But I guess through your work, we've learned that that's not always the case. The, the first time uh, DNA evidence was reversed was a case that we worked on. Kerry Robinson out of uh, Georgia, he was convicted with DNA evidence. And we showed that the DNA evidence in that case was bad. 
one thing I would point out is DNA is very, very good at telling us who might have been the original source of some biological material. It is absolutely, you know, not good at telling us how material got somewhere. So if, if I, you know, lend you my glove, you can leave my DNA somewhere. You, you need more than just the identification. Dr. Hampikian adds that it is a difficult process. Typically, a genealogist is needed to sort through records and newspapers and assist police in finding out, you know, who is alive, where people are, who might be around. And if these reports are true, Brian, that genetics played a significant role in this, in Koberger's arrest, Hampikian is confident that this is the process and mm -hmm. how they did it. It's fascinating to me. It's outside of my understanding completely, but I get it. I can follow the process a little bit. But that proving or disproving that DNA is what the system he used to show that Amanda Knox was not guilty, said that that DNA was tainted, there was something wrong with it. So it goes both ways, as you said. Is, is it reliable? Sure. But what does it tell you? That depends on what you're looking for. Yeah, it can be very effective, but he, he used another analogy with me. You know, if you take someone's toothbrush, mm -hmm. you could put their DNA wherever you want at that point, and it might oh, accidentally true. be transferred one way or another. So. Again, it shows you who's the original source of this biological material. And uh, if it turns out to be true from these national reports, what we're hearing, yep. it, it seems that that is how Koberger could be connected to this. And hopefully by tomorrow with the release of the unsealing of that uh, probable cause affidavit, we'll have a better understanding. Maybe that DNA did play a big part. Thank you very much, Andrew.